Hello, welcome. Today's video is about soldering. If you came to watch a video on soldering, you're on the wrong channel. <laughs> this is soldering. Get it? <laughs> okay. If you came to watch this beginner's guide to soldering, then you probably doubled with one of these. A pretty basic soldering iron for a few pound at the local store. How do you use these? Well, you chuck them in the bin because the next are useless. But then, being ever inventive, you get it back out the bin and you use it for poking holes in plastic. Heat it up till the tip gets mad hot. And use it for carving in plastic and all the other derivatives of plastic. And then you go out and you treat yourself to one of these. I'm not pushing any brand. Suffice to say, you want one that has an on-off switch and a heat control. You need a variable heat control to have a chance to solder. Useful things are the holder for the iron. Can I just say that at first glance this looks very similar to the one we just chucked in the bin. But it is a lot more sophisticated. The holder is just somewhere handy to put it while it's hot and you're working away or while it's heating up. I'll put this down for a second. It's still switched off so don't be concerned. I'm going to zoom in now. Here we are zoomed in looking at the soldering iron which is not unlike this cheap and nasty one so what we learn is that the heat control and the on off switch play a massive part in being able to solder successfully I want to stress at this point the soldering iron is switched off. Using wire wool, I stroke it through the wire wool to get a shiny point whatever tip you have. I must stress 
this is the key to soldering is to have a shiny tip I'll put it back in the holder for now switch it on turn the set into medium let's have a look at the parts necessary to successfully solder these are the two wires plan to solder one to the other for no reason other than to demonstrate I will solder a suitable gauge not too thick not too thin suitable for the wire wire wool things that have come in handy a crocodile clip that will become clear later and some small scissors these are curved but they could be straight one little tip about scissors use the slackness in the joint to help you strip the wire if these were perfect scissors with no slackness when I went to strip the wire it would probably just cut through the wire but if I use the slackness Hopefully you can see that it's just parted the inner from the outer so we now have a bare cable same again using the slackness in the wire in slackness in the scissors sorry when we cut it doesn't cleanly cut it slips to one side but it gives us a much better surface area now I'm putting a twist in the ends of these which is a mixed blessing because me touching it could be introducing grease this you see I've used the crocodile clip just to hold the wire so it's not chasing about the board and the first thing we'll do we'll take the soldering iron out we'll rub it on the wire wool and we'll tin the wire that was easy wasn't it So, 
soldering iron out to the holder, rub it on the wire wool, touch it against the wire. And it flows freely. If in doubt, clean the tip. If we now want to join the two wires together, Touch them together Add a bit of heat And there we have it So, to recap, soldering beginning one of one, a decent soldering iron station with a heat control and an on off switch. Keep the tip clean, stroking it on wire wool, taking care not to burn yourself. Keep everything clean and that's how to easily Solder. Hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget the little tip about the slack joint on scissors. I'll help you cut or strip wires cleanly. Thanks for watching. Join me again soon.